Welcome to Project Sunrisa's mental health web series. In this, we have real talk people talking about their real experiences of mental health, sharing parts of their journey, what got them through, their highs and lows, ups and downs. We want to highlight that mental health and wellbeing is something that affects all of us and that we all have, no matter our age or our gender. We hope that you can use these videos as somebody to help perhaps guide you through, someone to look up to, someone to see that it really does get okay and that you can get through tough times. I would like to add a disclaimer that this video talks about people's real life experiences of mental health. If there's certain topics around in mental health that you do feel uncomfortable listening or watching, please check the description to see if this video is suitable for you. My name is Mark Pearson. Um, I'm 27 years old and I come from a small village just outside Edinburgh called Mayfield. I currently work um, Monday to Friday as a customer service representative for Edinburgh City Council. When I'm not working, I usually enjoy making music, listening to music, writing music and spending several hours trying to watch or, or pick a film on Netflix, I'm sure as everyone does. Um, and and the, the reason for the, the recording today is sort of to help raise awareness and help break the stigma for mental health, whatever that may be, whatever mental, mental health condition you, you may have. Um, my earliest experience or earliest memory, should I say, was I was about seven to maybe ten years old, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I was always sort of thinking bad things were going to happen. So what I mean by that is sort of um, like a, a nuclear bomb going off or maybe war starting um, or a tidal wave coming to kill everyone, um, which is very strange for a young person to to sort of have fears about. Um, and you know, I always it was always went from my mind for, for some reason. Um, I always brought up these concerns to my, you know, my, my friends and my, my mother, and you know, it was just a continuous sort of thing. And I always sort of self, it was always self doubt in myself. Didn't feel um, like I was sort of worthy, or you know, I was I was very shy with everyone. Um, always self conscious of of my looks, and particularly my ears as well. They didn't stick out a bit. Um, so I can remember my mum signing me up for like sessions with a psychiatrist. Very odd for a young person, but at, at the time I didn't really think much of it. I just thought I was didn't think it was normal, but definitely it was it was unheard of. So we went we went through that, and you know it, it kind of, it, it faded over time these things sort of, you know, went went by and didn't think of them anymore and I was becoming a teenager so I was getting a, a little bit older um, and then teenagers, my, my teenage years was, was quite difficult, um, especially in high school um, I was very shy, didn't really have any of my friends that I, I hanged about with in, in, my, in my classes so any, anyone that I didn't really know, I wasn't really interested in sort of conversing and you know making a friendship with. So that that was really hard, and it, you know it, it came to the point that I would start skipping school. I never I never went to any classes, um, and that was sort of the the start of the main depression. I, I would say when I, when I was about fourteen years old, fourteen fifteen. Um, after after that, the depression and, and anxiety was was still there, but I was I was now I, I, when I left school, and that sort of continued in in the background as, as such. I always experienced anxiety, especially in like social events and meeting new people. I, I wouldn't really really talk, or if I was with someone, you know, they they would just talk for me and. It was very awkward, very awkward for for them and and for myself. Um, and then 
it just kept on getting worse o over time. So I, was, I really need. I was always sort of um, skeptical about getting tablets or going to the GP to to see what they had to say. I was really skeptical because I, I was in disbelief. I didn't want to believe w what was going on. I was like, well, it's you know, it's something that you can just bypass and and just keep on going with your life. But a very low moment, and then I, th I think you know I called it quits with that, and I had to, I had to just bite the bullet and go to the GP and and see what they had to say really. And then w when you go to the GP, they ask you questions. So how, how low do you feel from a one to ten, and this, that, and the next? And do you know, do you feel like something bad is going to happen to yourself, or do you feel like self harming and things like that. Um, but my test, my test came back. It was it was more of a questionnaire essentially. They don't take any bloods or, or anything like that, which um, which th then happened to sort of be. They, they, would, they would say, you know, um, well, our records say that you're clinically depressed and your anxiety is very high and things like that. So I, I took the tablets. Um, the, the tablets that I got prescribed, I think, were initially fluxetine. 20 milligrams of, of fluxetine that, that I had. They made me very sick to begin with. Um, and sick, I mean like, you know, I was very nauseous. I had urine infections and, and things like that. It was very odd, but I, I, apparently that side of the, that's a, a side effect to the tablet. So, you know, I kept on going with that and it, it just wasn't making things any better. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would have in the long run, but they were just making me very nauseous. and. At the time I was at the college and I couldn't have, you know, taken the time off. So I gave them up and I was like, oh, we'll see how things go. And then again, a few months later, things got even worse. So then back to square one, back to the GP doing the questionnaire and I got new tablets and they were fine. They were fine. Um, and then, so I'm, I'm leading up to my 18th birthday and until like maybe 21. So I, I was I was fine for that period. Just doing normal things that, that uh, yeah, someone that's turned 18 would, would do. Just, you know, go out and party with my friends every, every weekend, drinking every weekend, binging every weekend, um, just normal things that, that you would do. Um, and then gradually over time, the, the, the drinking was was getting more and more. Every, every week I was getting more and more, so instead of just binge drinking in one one or two days, maybe a Friday, Saturday every week, it, it was sort of maybe three times a week I was I was drinking and, and things like that. I didn't, didn't see much of a problem because, you know, when I would meet up with my friends, it would always be in the pub or, or somewhere when we would have a drink. And I didn't, everyone was doing it, didn't see much of a, a problem, so in my sense, I've had a drinking problem, so did they. Um, and then the depression, the depression really kicked in again. About maybe three years ago, and it's there's, there's nothing really. That, that sets it off. I think it's it's just it's something that's there, and it's almost like another voice speaking to you, like another person. And they, I mean, when you try to say, when you have ambitions and goals and you say, I want to do this, I want to become a musician, I want to be a footballer, so on and so forth. It's it's almost like that, that person inside you is being like, no, no, you can't do that. You're, you're worthless. You don't deserve that. So why why can you do it? And you sort of believe that voice that's in your in your, in your head. It's, it's not physical voices, by the way. It's, it's sort of something inside you telling you that you're doubting yourself um, or if you look in the mirror so my hair looks nice today and you know I, I look good and I feel good that that voice that feeling of failure goes no you don't what's the point just just give up and that's sort of my relation to it and that's probably the easiest way I can explain my issue there's, there's always something telling me that I can't I'm a big pessimist always have been um, but that that's a big part of it and it's, it's affected everything in terms of my relationships with, with other people, um, social occasions, work, 
everything. And then, sort of the the drinking got got really bad. So I I was aiding the depression with with drink. So I I thought you know when I, when I was younger I used to drink to be more confident and talk to people and not be as awkward. So that that's why I, I drank then as as such. But now it was sort of to aid. The, the depression and the, the emptiness and the low feelings that, that was always happening that was occurring. And I was drinking every day. It was seven days of I would drink probably five nights a week, sometimes seven. So it really, really depended on how, how low I was feeling. But that was a constant cycle. It would be like I would drink one night because I was feeling low that day, then feeling even lower the next again day. So it, it's, the higher I got, the further I fell, and you feel like you're at, you're at rock bottom every day, and that was constant cycle. I was like, well, I need to drink to make myself feel better now, and then it's it kept on going and going and going. Um, and it was a real problem, as I said, it's, it's affect affected everything in my life, financial, financially, uh, my relationships, whether that be with my friends, my mother, um, my family, my partner. It's affected everything, and then I'm I'm obviously working on that. It's it's, it's something that, that comes over time, taking baby steps, and you need to try and get yourself or back on your feet and things like that. But I think my point is, when when you feel it is low, and you feel like you've hit rock bottom, and you feel empty, and you don't feel like there's any light at the end of the tunnel, I think it's really important to have. A hobby or a project as such. So my 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 main interest would be be music. Um, so I've always played in bands and uh, you know written music and played it and trying to learn new things on the guitar and or so on and so forth. Um, I think it's really important to keep yourself active, um, especially with, with fitness as well. Exercise is a very key thing. Um, eating properly. It is well. Um, but whatever, whatever it is, have a, have a routine. I, I would say R routine is is key, especially in the times that we are now with the coronavirus. Um, very, very difficult. Very difficult, unfortunately. I think everyone's really in the same boat, and, and I think it's very important. Some, the many people that have lost their jobs, lost their lives, lost loved ones. We're all feeling down at the moment. And we need to keep each other... We need to reach out to our fa family and friends. Because that's that's essentially it's what we have at the moment. We, we need to keep by one another. We need to stick to the rules. We need to keep everyone safe. My mother... I, had coronavirus last year, probably mid mid March, April. She had it. Um, but, but I was very skeptical about this this virus. I have to say, I was sort of like, it will just pass. It's just one of these things, like the swine flu, this that, and the next. I was very skeptical. But it isn't until it happens to one of your your loved ones, then you really like realise and open your eyes. You know, that this is real, and we need to keep safe. We need to do our part in this. Now, my mother is incredibly lucky that she survived that. After spending 10 days in the house, I ha haven't seen a more ill person ever. So, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to wake up one day and she's just going to be in her bed dead. And horrible feeling. But she pulled through. Unfortunately, after th three and a half weeks of um, an induced coma, um, in, in, in the hospital, it was, it was very hard because we didn't know what was going to happen at all. But luckily, very luckily, she pulled through and still here with us today, which I'm very, very grateful to have her. But it just goes to show, you know, how, how easily it is to, to, to contract this virus and possibly lo lose a loved one. Um, and in these tough times, it's never a good time to lose a loved one, but you know we need 
all the support and, and love that we can get at the moment is so important to reach out. So if you're having feelings or doubts, any anxieties, and I know because I'm speaking from this on a personal point that I've I've felt embarrassed and it is incredibly embarrassing to admit that I have a mental health problem after all the years denying it. I'm very embarrassed to, to admit that, you know, I, that I have a drinking problem as well. Incredibly embarrassing. Which I'm I'm working on both. I'm working on everything. And yeah, I just hope that we all pull through this together. Stay safe, reach out, take care.